The holidays are quickly approaching, and if you are looking for a side dish that won't break the banks on bites, points, or calories, I've got the perfect solution for you here. This is my mashed butternut squash, the perfect substitution for sweet potatoes, or even mashed potatoes in my opinion. But if you'd like to see how these are done, stick around, because it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I'm a home cook and amateur baker, and I'm here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today is one of mine, of course, but I figured with Thanksgiving coming up, this would be the perfect time to share it with you because I am doing mashed butternut squash. Now we've been getting butternut squash this time of year from a local restaurant. When we order out, that's usually the side we get because their butternut squash is delicious. So I wanted to get something at least close to that. And Paul says I've done just that. So let's go over the ingredients. I have here a three to four pound butternut squash. This is about three and a half pounds. You don't have to buy a squash and prepare it yourself. I will show you how to do it just because it is actually cheaper than buying the already cubed butternut squash in the store. But if that's what you wanna get, that's fine. It's less work for you. But I am gonna show you how to prepare the butternut squash just in case you need that information. And you could also use frozen butternut squash if you wanted. You would just wanna thaw it out beforehand. And again, you want about 40 ounces of that. Here I have one quarter cup of almond milk and you don't have to worry about it being at room temperature because we are going to heat that up. Here I have a quarter cup or four tablespoons of light butter. Now that's divided. I'm gonna use one tablespoon in one part of the recipe three tablespoons in the other. So that's why I list it as four tablespoons. I know it's a quarter cup, but since it's divided, I wanted you to know you're gonna be dividing it by tablespoons. Here I have two tablespoons of brown sugar replacement. You could use sugar-free maple syrup. You could use granulated sugar replacement as well. I just prefer with squash that it has some of that caramel flavor and that's perfect for it. Here I have one half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. And you don't have to use pumpkin pie spice. You could use just cinnamon if you want, or even apple pie spice if you wanted. But I like the mix of spices in a pumpkin pie spice. And I have one half teaspoon of salt and one quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And those are all of the ingredients you're gonna need, not very many. But let me shuffle a few things around and we'll get started. Okay, so to prepare our butternut squash, we are going to cube it. That way it'll be in the oven less time than if you left it in halves. You could do it in halves and just do it for a longer time. I just find it very difficult to scrape the meat out of the skin and not pull some of that skin in there. So I prefer it being cubed, but you do it as you want to do it. And we are obviously going to peel it, but you don't want to peel it before you've cut it because the flesh can get very wet and slippery and you don't want to be trying to cut it in half when it's slippery. So we're going to start off with it skin on and we're going to cut off the bottom and the top and you, you don't have to take too much off. You just want a little bit of that off. Then I'm going to cut it in half and this can be a little challenging, especially if you have any muscle or nerve issues like myself because these are pretty sturdy vegetables. Just be careful as you're working. And there we have it cut in half. And as I said, you could just scoop out the seeds and bake it this way. You'd wanna bake it for about an hour if you did it that way. But let me get these seeds scooped out. And to scoop that out, all I used was a spoon and just scraped everything out. You wanna get all of those stringy bits that are holding the seeds in place out, but that is done. Now I'm gonna switch over to my vegetable peeler. I'm gonna stand this up and just start peeling all of this off. You don't have to get too far down to get to the flesh. So let me get these peeled. I'll be right back. 
My squash is peeled and you can see I peel it down until you don't see too much white. You don't have to go too far down, but you do want to make sure that all of this skin is removed. Now you can also buy them in the store like this. Usually you get one half and even that is, I think it was about four or five dollars just for that. So I'm kind of frugal with my money these days. So I'm going to go through the extra work. But if you don't want to, don't. You don't have to do it like I do. All right, so now we're going to cut this into cubes about one inch. And I've mentioned before that the tip of my pinky is about an inch. So that's what I use as a guide. It doesn't have to be precise. You don't have to get out the measuring tape. You just want them all to be about the same size. So I'm going to put them with the flat side down because that way it'll stay in place better. And start by cutting them in half and then measuring. So basically I'll be cutting this into about four lengths. Then what I will do is take two of them and do the same exact thing. In this case, I'm just going to cut this right in half. And the same thing with this one. Then I'll bring them all back together and cut them into my cubes. And then I'm going to throw them into a large bowl. And that way I get it to also see if any of them are a little too large. If I didn't cut through like this piece needs a little more cutting through and just throw that all in there. I'll let me get the other half cubed up and I'll be back. My squash is cubed. Now what I'm going to do is take my one tablespoon of butter, light butter, and I'm going to microwave it for just about 15 seconds just to melt that down. All right, so my butter is mostly melted. I'm going to stir this around with my little spatula just to melt the rest of that and melt whatever was on my little spatula from removing it from the spoon and the bowl. To this, I'm going to add the pumpkin pie spice, salt, and pepper, and stir that in. That's going to help those spices to really bloom and get those flavors activated. Just mix that together. Now I'm going to pour this over the butternut squash. There's not a lot of this butter here, so you don't have to worry about it being fully coated. We're just giving this flavor in here and then tossing to combine just so it spreads throughout the squash. And as I said, it's not going to coat them like massively. You just want a little bit of that flavor on all of these. Oh wait, I did forget to add my brown sugar. Since I made this mistake and didn't get it to melt into the butter, I'm going to microwave this for a few seconds to get this melted down. So I melted this down just so it's going to spread through our squash more easily. If I hadn't forgotten, it would have melted into the butter, but it'll be fine. That's one of the things, sometimes little accidents happen in the kitchen and rather than freaking out about it, just find a way to make it work. So now I'm going to toss this again to get that brown sugar coating as much of this as I can. It's not as spread throughout as it would have been with the being melted into the butter, but it is what it is. It will melt in the oven, so I'm not too worried about it. So now I'm going to move this aside and bring in, I have my baking sheet with some parchment. If you don't have parchment sheets, you can just spray this with cooking spray. And I'm going to lay this all out onto the sheet. Get all of that brown sugar because I didn't get it melted in correctly with the butter. But the recipe is accurate on the site, on my blog. So now I'm going to just spread them out into an even layer so that there is not too much crowding here. So now these are going into the oven. I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. These are going in for 25 to 30 minutes. About halfway through, I'm going to toss these a little bit, just stir them up so that they're getting more roasty all over the place. And then we will move on. So 25 to 30 minutes and I'll be back. All right, so my squash still has a couple of minutes left. I'm going for the full 30, but I'm going to start getting the butter and milk ready for it. So I have my pan here. I'm going to set this on medium, add in the butter, and I'm just going to let this melt a little bit before I add in the milk. Now I'm going to mash this by hand. I have my potato masher here. 
You could use an electric mixer. You could also do this in the food processor. So what you would do is heat up the butter and the milk in the microwave and just add that to the processed butternut squash once that is ready. But I'm gonna add the milk in now that the butter is melted. You just don't wanna add cold butter and milk because you're gonna be mashing. You need, don't need to try to work that in as well. Now I'm gonna turn that off and go get the squash out of the oven. Okay, so I have my squash and it's nicely softened. And what I did was just test it with a fork in one of the bigger pieces to make sure it was ready to come out. Now I'm going to toss this all into the milk mixer and I can definitely get a whiff of that pumpkin pie spice and the brown sugar that's all heated up and coating this squash. And now I'm gonna mash this into the milk and butter to combine everything. This is my workout for the day. But as I said, you could do this with an electric mixer. You could do it in the food processor. You could also do this ahead. You could cook the butternut squash ahead of time and then heat up the milk and butter and add the butternut squash cooked in here and then mash it. So especially with Thanksgiving coming up, that might be an option if you have a lot of things going on, as most people do, to get some of your prep out of the way. And it doesn't take too long to mash this down, even though I'm doing it by hand. And I'll stir it a little bit, mash it, make sure I'm getting any larger clumps mashed in there and then just smooth that out to make it look pretty for you you obviously don't have to do that part but there you have it some delicious mashed butternut squash nicely scented with that pumpkin pie spice you got a little richness from that light butter and that almond milk gives that a nice little nutty flavor in there as well but you could use oat milk anytime i ever say almond milk you can use whatever milk you want. But that is all there is to making mashed butternut squash that is not going to be overloaded with butter, but still has tons of flavor. So now for those nutrition facts. I am making this as serving four. You can make it for serving six if you'd prefer, or even eight, you might be able to get eight out of that, but I'm doing it as serving four because we love our butternut squash. And for one serving of this, it is only going to be one better balanced bite or old blue point, and that's mostly coming from the light butter. If you are following calories, the calories for one serving would be 120. And if you were following macros, the fat would be 4.4 grams. Saturated fat would be 1.1 grams. Protein would be 1.9 grams. Carbs would be 27.8 grams. Fiber would be 6.6 .6 grams. And sugars would be 4.1 grams for one fourth of this pot. But I hope that you enjoyed this recipe in this video and that you'll be using it for your upcoming holidays. And if you did, I'd appreciate you doing the usual, like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. We have a tag video coming up Tuesday. We have another collab coming up the following Sunday. So there are things coming up that aren't on my typical Fridays. So hit that notification bell. Also, if you want the recipe for this, I will link directly to it down in the description box as well as to the blog itself if you're looking for any of my recipes. And I do have a playlist for Thanksgiving and holiday dishes, so don't forget to check that out, and I'll actually link those as well. Also down there is my Amazon storefront, my recipes with Roy Gear store, my Built Bar Rewards, Fetch Rewards, and my social media if you want to follow me over there. I have my Instagram and three Facebook groups that I'm part of, so check out that description box for all sorts of information. So now I'm waiting for an experimental main dish to come out of the oven, and then I'll be ready to serve this up with it, and I can't wait. I hope you'll be enjoying this on your holiday table, and until next time, bye. 